All right, guys, take a look at the map here before we get started. We are taking a little trip to Florence, Arizona. And you're like, well, what's so special about Florence? A couple things. Um, I'm a huge Old West fan, and I'm a huge World War II buff. So Florence has one really famous Old West gunfight, and Florence was the one of the locations during World War II for a POW camp for the German and Italian soldiers that were uh, captured during the war. So let's see if we can go down there and retrace history's footsteps and see if we can't find those things and see what else is around uh, to look at and check out. So again, Florence is southeast of Phoenix. It's about an hour's drive from Phoenix. If you go down, take the 60, hit the um, Apache Junction or the Florence Junction outside of Apache Junction, which is the Highway 79, then down to Florence. If you're from Tucson, you can kind of come up through Oro Valley and Canalita and take the 79 and come in that way. So that's going to be our trip for the day. So let's uh, grab the keys to the Porsche and let's go check out Florence, Arizona. So today's little road trip takes me down to Florence, Arizona. It's one of the oldest towns in Arizona, and it also has some interesting history with World War II and the Old West that hopefully we can find and dig into. But for now, this is the second courthouse for the county, and we'll go check out the rest of them. The, there's also an audio, self-guided audio tour that you can listen to and drive around to see the old buildings of the town and what's going on. After this, we'll head down south to the site where Tom Mix, the uh, old uh, Western movie uh, actor, died in a car wreck. And there's a few other little places that we want to stop and see. So for now, let's uh, get back in the Porsche and let's go check out Florence, Arizona. So the first place I always want to stop is going to be the uh, local chamber of commerce or visitor center. And in this case, Florence has two of them. They have a historical society museum and they also have a visitor center that is also a museum of that's the uh, first courthouse of the area. So our first stop, let's hit the, uh, the courthouse and see what they have to say. McFarland is the site of the very first courthouse in Pinal County. It was constructed with local adobe brick and wood and is the oldest courtroom left standing in Arizona. It did serve as a hospital for 50 years before being turned into the visitor center and chamber. That was kind of cool, seeing the uh, first jail and the first courthouse here in Florence. Now let's get set and let's go see the historical museum that's right down the road. The Pinal County Historical Society Museum has a ton of exhibits inside. Everything from Indian, Native Americans, to an extensive bob wire collection, cactus furniture, quilts, antique clothing, prison artifacts, including a hangman's noose, and a two-seater gas chamber chair. So much stuff. Um, it also contains an immense library of Arizona Highways magazines and history books and information on the region. And it's only five bucks to get into the museum. It's quite, quite a cool experience, and the staff there is super friendly and will help you discover anything you want to know about Florence and the surrounding areas. Well, that's kind of cool. Now we know the location of where the POW camps for the German and Italian soldiers were during World War II here in Florence. So we're going to go find those a little bit later. And also the site of the famous Tunnel Saloon gunfight between the uh, sheriff and his deputy, kind of an old west gunfighters duo. We'll go downtown and find that location and check it out. You wanna talk about a kick-ass True Value hardware store? This is it right here in Florence. It uh, was originally a, the Mandel's department store and then back in the 90s, it became a true value hardware store. It is worth the time to stop, go inside, 
and check this store out. It's Too much fun. It's chock full of interest and out of story for some mighty fine folks. We got three big rooms full of merchandise, antiques, and interesting memories. So take your time looking around. There's free popcorn for the taking set. Help yourself to buy. We encourage questions and conversation about the store. Don't be shy. Make yourself at home. Don't forget to tell your friends all about us. Y'all come back now anytime. On May 31st, 1888, the ex-sheriff, Pete Gabriel, wandered into the tunnel saloon right here in Florence. His ex-deputy, Joe Fye, noticed his ex-boss into the saloon and still had a grudge against her for being fired a few years back. As Joe walks through the door with his gun in his hand, Pete yells out, Joe! And the two former lawmen open fire on each other. Eleven shots are fired as Pete walks down the bar towards Joe. Joe, with one hand, his gun, fires point-blank into Pete's chest, sending his slug through his right lung. Another bullet from Joe's gun hits Pete's intestines, but Pete stays on his feet and returns fire. One of those bullets finds its way into Joe's left thigh, shattering his bone. The other round hits Joe in the right shoulder, going through both of his lungs. Pete survives his wounds, and he's back in a month. Joe wouldn't be so lucky and died here. This here is the Silver King Hotel. The building was built around 1895 of red brick, and the hotel contained a bar and restaurant on the first floor and about 15 guest rooms up on the second floor. What you see here today isn't how it looked back then. Fires in Mother Nature have caused most of the original building to disappear. Here we have the Second Catholic Church of the Assumption. It was completed in 1912 and an example of a mission revival style of architecture. It replaced the other church that was built on the site in 1884, which burned down in 1893. Here's the second courthouse in Florence. Built in 1891 is an historic three-story red brick courthouse in the late Victorian revival style of architecture at the time. It is topped by a fake clock tower. Due to the lack of funds, the clock was never installed, and instead, the hands were painted on to say 1144. In 1961, a new courthouse replaced it, and in 2011, the building was restored to its former glory as we see it today. Did somebody say wine? This here is the Windmill Winery. The property started out in 1906 as Arizona's first brickyard. Today, it's a popular wedding venue and wine tasting business. The Big Red Barn is from 1910 and was moved piece by piece from Wisconsin. The wine tasting room is open most days and offers five different wines of all types grown in Arizona. Well, it's about one o'clock on a Saturday, so I think it's about time we go get some tacos and maybe a margarita to quench our thirst before we head out on the second part of this leg. So I found myself over to LB's Cantina. And gotta tell you, it started out as a grocery store, but has now become, in the last few years, a restaurant. Delicious margaritas. Um, I had the street tacos. They were delicious as well. So if you're here in Florence, stop in and get yourself a margarita and a few tacos and say hello to the family that runs the restaurant here at l &B Cantina. Lunch, l &B's. pretty good stuff there. Now it's time to take that trip down south to see the spot where Tom Mix, the famous uh, Western uh, actor, died in his car wreck. And then after that, we'll head back up to St. Anthony's Monastery. Let's get on the road. Well, about 10 miles south of Florence is the Tom Mix Memorial. Tom Mix was an early Western movie actor who made nearly 300 films, mostly silent movies. Mix was on his way to Phoenix on October 12, 1940, and he was speeding in his yellow 1937 supercharged Cord 812 Phantom, and he was unable to bring the car to a stop when he noticed the bridge was washed out. He swerved and turned the car over several times, but that's not what killed him. He had with him a large aluminum suitcase that struck him in the back of the neck, killing him. He was 60 years old. Well, the Tom Mix Memorial isn't a lot to see, but it's really pretty out here. So let's flip around and let's head back to St. Anthony's and check out the monastery. Maybe we'll get some spiritual enlightenment. So here we are at St. Anthony's Greek Orthodox Monastery. 
the summer of 1995, six monks arrived here to establish the St. Anthony's Monastery, carrying with them the sacred heritage of the Holy Mountain. Upon their arrival, the fathers began the necessary construction, building the main church, living quarters for the monks, and a dining hall and guest quarters. As the monastery expanded, more chapels were built, a vegetable garden, a small vineyard, citrus orchards, and olive groves were soon planted. An elaborate system of gardens, pathways, gazebos, and Spanish fountains make the monastery and its extensive grounds a true oasis in the desert. You can visit, but only from like 10.30 in the morning until 2.30 in the afternoon, and make sure you have on long pants and long sleeve shirts. You know what? It's best you read all the rules for visitors over on the monastery's website before you head out here. During World War II, Florence had a POW camp for Italian and German soldiers, mostly that came from the fighting from North Africa. Today, it's no longer there. All that's left is this church bell, and the property now is a 55-plus retirement community. So the bell is all we have left of the POW camps out here in Florence. So our last stop here in Florence is the Charles D. Poston. He was considered the father of Arizona, and he attended to build a temple to the sun atop Poston Butte. Um, but he ran out of money, and when he died in 1902, he was buried on a normal grave site in Phoenix. But a few years later, a bunch of his buddies got together and built him this 14-foot tower of a pyramid on top of the mountain and dug him up and brought him here where he resides today. All right, guys, this wraps up our little trip to Florence, Arizona. I hope if you have some time, you will uh, take a trip down here as well and check out everything that we had a chance to look at and maybe spend some more time. Until then, guys, I hope you would uh, like and subscribe to the channel. And if you would, comment down below on some other places around Arizona or wherever you're at that uh, would be great travel videos. Thanks so much. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.